just a few seconds remaining before the start of race number two. Nick Guerra in the number 97 grabbed the pole. He did well at Montreal last year before getting taken out by Ali Nelson. So I'm not surprised to see him on pole. Derek Hamill, an amazing qualifying effort again. He started on pole in Homestead and will start outside pole here. Guerra easily slips into the lead as they head off into turn number one. That's Sidney Crasta up the inside of Hamill, nearly making contact. And there's three cars off in the back. Max Anderson was one of the first cars to make it three wide there, and he just got in too hot into turn number one, took out McGovern, and A.J. Green will also be delegated to the back of the pack. Brandon Krasta also got a small piece of that, and then had some trouble merging back on track. No grip on uh, those tires after getting into the dirt, got shoved out in a four-wide battle with Engelram, Andreas Allen, and and uh, some other drivers and finally is able to merge safely back onto the racetrack after uh, some more contact in uh, in Misty's Bend there. The top half dozen or so have sorted themselves out back a little further. Yeah, not so much. That's Engelram trying to hold off uh, Michael Harvey in the 72. The zero of Kiloa Hankins coming up the inside. Oh, Engelram is now smoking on the racetrack. Trying to get out of the way, goes to the outside, but that's kind of the optimal racing line, so now takes a bit of a, a middle line as everyone swerves all around trying to get by. No one's gotten into uh, trouble getting by the 47 so far as far as damage is concerned. A lot of people are going to lose quite a bit of time, especially Denzel Williams there in the, in the 17. But uh, that team, Engelram reporting some sort of engine failure. We'll, we'll find out later on what exactly that was. Big shout out to John Arndt in the 05. He's been driving the wheels off of that car for the last five or so miles. He's up to 18th from a 37th place starting position. Insane job. Uh, of course, that was assisted a little bit by Matthew Engelram's engine explosion as well as the, uh, the, the Macedonia, that being turn one shenanigans on lap number one. But now going for a pass on Sam Curtis, who hasn't had a lot of luck in hard competitions ever since his uh, win back in Motegi, and that's not going to help. Sylvian Lasavage turns around the 66. The 05 had to, uh, was trying to close the deal on the 66 by sliding up in front, caused the 66 to check up, and there's no way Lasavage could have known that that was going to happen. Got into the back of him, and Curtis will uh, be delegated to the rear of the pack in the early going here. Lasavage going for a good run here. He's in the top 20 at least. Uh, his best fi best career finish came back in Montreal, his, uh, his hometown with a ninth place finish. So uh, he's a bit, bit of a road ringer and we could see him do pretty well here today. Another driver doing well and it's a bit of an underdog story. Aiden Shepard in the 14 Tim Hortons machine up into second place with a great pass on Derek Hamill who just ran a little bit wide down in turn 14 there. Shepard had a rookie season that most drivers would want to forget and probably drink about. Coming dead last in either of the Hark Can-Am series divisions and wrecking out of both of the road course races before they even hit turn two. Smashing into the turn two wall in Canadian Tire Motorsports Park and rolling over at Montreal. So certainly an improvement over that uh, so far today. Ended up doing fairly well in the uh, in the consolation race at Sandown, the uh, non-points event there, but uh, looking for some more redemption here today, and he's got a strong car, as it seems so far. Some pretty intense racing a little bit further back. That's Blake Camphausen going for a spot on Fingai, runs him way out to the outside there, but they keep it together. That's Joshua Sikuli. On the inside, making it three wide. Fing I nearly shoved out into the grass by Camphausen. Not, I don't think he'll appreciate that very much. Of course, Fing Guy is one of the most vocal drivers in the Hark series paddock, so uh, wouldn't be surprised if he said something about that one after the race. If, if, uh, if especially if his race goes bad, he's he's always one to uh, to share his mind. As Camphausen and Sikuli continue to race side by side, that's Ike Durbin trying to come up the outside of uh, Finga Camphausen's 
going to win out. So far doing better than he did in Homestead, where Camphausen was involved in pretty much every accident possible somehow. So, uh, yeah, he's kept that race car clean so far. Let's hope it stays that way. Few new contenders up in the top seven or so. That's Casey Lester in the 013. He's got by Sidney Crest in the 21. As everyone, this is probably one of the hardest corners to take. That is the chase here at this racetrack, partially uh, referring to the uh, the tricky Bathurst corner and also to Chase Elliott, who's out of uh, Georgia. Dawsonville, Georgia to be exact, as Lester ran real wide there. Chester, Chester Harvey in the 57 has also been making his way forward and, well, just got an easy position there. DJ Curtis, uh, who won one of the Homestead races, is still up here. He looks to potentially take over the points lead if he can do well, especially with an uh, angle ram out on lap number one. Nicholas Guerra continues to hold on to the race lead as we're coming to the end of lap number four. He's been consistent out there, and because of that, he's held a pretty much constant gap over Derek Hamill. Aiden Shepard, on the other hand, is closing in, so Guerra might start having to push it a little bit, but not like that. Guerra off the racetrack in Macedonia after running it too hard into turn number one. Derek Hamill, same thing, might have been following Guerra's line, and, well, that's why you don't want to get too comfortable doing stuff like that. As Guerra, Guerra and Hamill struggle to get it out of the grass and uh, the sand trap and make it back onto the racetrack, it's going to be a hard drive in front of them to get up to their former positions. Henrietta Fitzwater, currently in 21st, might be challenged by Blake Camphausen coming in to turn number five. Nope, not so much. Fitzwater has other problems. Now trying to get herself out of that sand trap without losing too, too much time. But that's going to put her right back into 40th place. Aiden Shepard certainly hasn't had a lot of experience leading these races. He crashed into the wall and sand down the one time he was leading it. And because of that, he's just trying to take it easy, I think, but perhaps a little bit too easy since Caitlin Seng and Alexander Rowe are both coming in a hurry uh, up to challenge Shepard for that first position. Caitlin Seng out of New York, a Chinese uh, driver of Chinese descent, in the 07 car has proven very strong so far this weekend being one of the uh, faster cars in practice and qualifying and now going for the lead on the inside of the 14 as Shepard got that uh, got to turn five a little bit wrong into Elliott's here trying to get him uh, before they hit the, uh, the the second part of this corner where it's very hard to make a pass from that inside line it's awfully bumpy down there on the bottom of the racetrack. Not a lot of grip to be had. And because of that, Sang will actually lose the position to Alexander Rowe in the Motec machine. Kiloa Hankins impressed a lot of drivers and spectators alike, uh, leading quite a few laps at Homestead, Miami, and being up near the front for much of the day, but it just got quite a bit harder for Kiloa to replicate those results here at Brasstown. It's not just Sang and Rowe that want to challenge Aiden Shepard now. Pretty much everyone in the top 10 has been closing in on Aiden, who's doing a, an amazing job at defending that lead, but is pretty much holding up quite a few of the drivers. Shepard might have used a little bit too much of his tires early on there, getting up to the front. And uh, of course, he doesn't have a lot of experience up at the front to begin with, so I guess that's understandable. But Alexander Rowe, what a move on both Sang and Shepard, uh, going from third to first in Misty's Bend there. Shepard coming up the inside, still with a run. Sang originally went with Shepard, now trying to follow Rowe through potentially here into second. Chester Harvey from fifth at the start of this lap up to potentially challenging for third, still side by side between those two top two as this will definitely help the rest of the top 10 continue to close, and that's Krasta still sitting in four. Shepard might have it. No, Rowe back up the outside of Shepard. Really buggered uh, the uh, the exit of that corner, and Sang is going to follow 
row through into second. That's Krasta into a podium spot as well as Shepard goes from first to fourth. Tony Green running 16th and loses it at the exit of Elliott's bus stop. A little bit of damage to the 32, not anything devastating, but it's certainly going to lose him quite a bit of time. Things getting awfully racy in the second group of cars. It's Bill Littlejohn leading currently. Grayson Acevedo trying to recover from an engine failure back in Homestead to uh, get a better spot. Michael Harvey in the 72 is up here as well. That's, that's Tristan Wilhoyd who nearly got turned by Sylvian Lasavage. Great save by Wilhoyd there as Little John continues to take a bit of a defensive line. They're racing further up for position as well. Andreas Allen uh, and DJ Curtis side by side there as well as Aiden Shepard and Sidney Krasta up a little bit further. Alexander Rowe a little bit hard down into the chase and runs her wide there. Gets her real squirrely. Caitlin Sang up the outside here in the 07. Was slower into the corner, but certainly got a better corner exit. It's going to be a rather unconventional but impressive pass if Sang can make this work. Still alongside, and it looks like Sang might actually get it done. Got a real solid run out of turn 14. And down into 15, she's going to have the optimal line and sweeps back in front of the number 36 and sang to the race lead for the first time today. Very similar deal to Henrietta Fitzwater for Wes Jones. Just can't get her slowed up from the long Blue Ridge uh, straightaway slash curve, whatever you want to call that. It's a hell of an uphill section, but a, but a very long one indeed. And just runs off the course in turn six. Loses a few positions and is now overtaken by Henrietta Fitzwater, ironically enough. Sydney Crass has ha not had the best lap and a half or so. Falling from third to seventh. Doesn't want to lose the spot to Andreas Allen. But Allen runs that corner really hard and shoves Crasta out pretty much there. Crass is going to lose several spots. I think Allen might have been a little bit frustrated. He's been at the tail end of that lead group for quite a while. Hasn't been able to make a lot of progress despite going for a lot of positions. So it might have just been getting frustrated from that as Krasik continues to lose spots, uh, probably due to uh, the lack of grip that uh, she is experiencing since uh, coming back on the road. Things still pretty close in the battle for the lead. Caitlin Sang holds on to it with Rowan Harvey battling just behind. Sang a little early on the loud pedal there. Gets wide and out onto the curb and into the grass a little bit. Now takes a defensive line to hold off Alexander Rowe coming into Misty's Bend. And Sang's going to hold on to that spot. Uh, as far as for second, it's still anyone's guess. It looks like it's going to be Harvey, though. With some draft, uh, with some of the draft off of Sang, off Blue Ridge here. Tony Tabularis currently running in the 24th position behind Estevas Cortez and loses it on the exit of Elliott's bus stop. Jack Lagacy, completely blind corner, had no way of knowing that Tabularis was stopped there and a huge amount of damage for both the 18 and 69 cars. Tabularis drives that car away, but there's more trouble. Uh, back there with Jack Lagacy. There's actually a pretty good battle going on just behind Tabularis. Michaels and AJ Green side by side through the bus stop. That's Guerra into the wall. Hankins makes a judgment call right at the last second. The gap closes up before Van Evenhoven can follow Hankins through and a large amount of damage to the front end of the 81. Not sure whether Van Evenhoven will be able to continue but if he does, they're going to have to remove that whole front end of the car, and he's going to be well off the pace. Green flag pit stops have begun. We're more than halfway th through this thing on lap 13. Here comes Chester Harvey with a run on the race lead from Caitlin Sang. Uh, Harvey tried to get the lead down in Misty's Bend, wasn't able to quite get the job done, but was able to use the draft to his advantage up Blue Ridge. And now here into Elliott's bus stop. It looks like he might get it. No, not quite. As Harvey really has to check up to avoid hitting the wall. The exit of Elliott's bus stop and Sang off into the distance. Aiden Shepard 
up back up into second. He got he's gotten by Alexander Rowe to get himself back up into third and now passes Harvey for second. DJ Curtis is on the move as well. He's up into the top five, might go for fourth or third. <laughs> There into the right hand sweeper. He was looking to make it three wide. Ended up backing off. Smart move there by uh, by Curtis. As Aiden Shepard back into second. The two Crassas, brother and sister, are running 11th and 12th. Sydney Crassas still appears a bit frustrated out there on track. Well, that's going to make family dinners awfully awkward for the next little while as Crass gets turned into the pits after contact from the 21. Sydney has been a little bit frustrated ever since getting shoved out of the podium and then off the racing surface by Andreas Allen. So I guess it's sort of understandable, but that was pretty avoidable on behalf of Crass to there. He, he, he might have gotten a better run out of turn 15, but uh, you got to be a little bit more careful than that. Estevas Cortez and Denzel Williams are some of the rearmost drivers of the top 20. Trying to hold off that spot from Joshua Sikuli as Durbin has spun and hit the wall. Estevas Cortez, nowhere to go there, and that looks pretty terminal. Smoke pouring from the car. Durbin actually pulls that car away relatively quickly as Cortez holds it off to the left there. Henrietta Fitzwater, what was that, man? What was that? What? Fitzwater with huge contact with the uh, number 62, taking out AJ Green in the process as well. That is target fixation at its finest from the 61. Most of the field has already come in. But uh, some of the last few drivers to make their rounds on pit road include Chester Harvey and DJ Curtis. Chester managed to lead a lap or two under the uh, pit window. Blake Kamphausen stays out yet another lap. Amazing that he's pushing it that far, but he's not going to hold on to the race lead without some sort of magic. Uh, DJ Curtis, an amazing stop compared to Chester Harvey. There comes Caitlin Sang down the front straightaway, and Curtis is going to beat them out. Impressive job by Curtis's crew, who got him into position to challenge for the race win in Homestead, um, and again puts him uh, in a position to challenge for the race uh, win here in Brasstown Bald. Just to add insult to injury at this point, Sidney Crass is going to end up retiring from the race in down in turn number 13 from a piston explosion. In order to get his second straight win, DJ Curtis is going to need to hold off a very hard charging John Arndt who's somehow up into second from starting 37th, but he might not be there for long. Here he comes with a charge on DJ Curtis and he's got the lead for now. Curtis might be able to come back here in Misty's Bend. He's up the inside and they're going to be side by side up Blue Ridge. Still at least four cars have a shot at this. Shepard and Sang run uh, single file, and if they continue double file like this, they are going to catch him in a real hurry. Behind them, there's three more cars. That's Andreas Allen, uh, Tristan Wilhoyt, and Casey Lester, it looks like. Curtis back into the lead. The, uh, the inside of the racetrack was able to prevail for Curtis there, but here comes Arndt again up the outside, uh, up the, well, what was the inside and is now going to be the outside coming into Elliott's. Curtis runs as defensive as he can, and he's going to hold off Arndt for now. On board, Aiden Shepard, who's sitting in third, takes the chase nice and easy because of that, closes right up on DJ Curtis and John Arndt. Arndt going for a move on DJ Curtis though for the lead up the outside. Here comes Caitlin Sang out of nowhere as well as there we're coming to six laps to go just around just less than 30 miles to go here. Quite a large course this is at 4.799 miles. John Arndt able to slip in front of Curtis. Curtis trying to get a run up the inside but Butchers the exit of the corner just spun his tires a little bit there. And here comes Caitlin Sang for second. 
John Arndt initially pulled away from DJ Curtis and Aiden Shepard, but Curtis is on the charge, once again giving it one final shot. He's completely alongside the 05, heading into Macedonia. This is going to be tight. Oh, man, the 33 shoved the 05 uh, out quite, wi uh, quite wide. Curtis trying to use all of the racetrack that he can and might have actually made a tiny bit of contact with the 05, but they're both still giving each other lots of room. Plenty of mutual respect between these two drivers out there right now. Will this allow Aiden Shepard and Caitlin Sang to close in? Casey Lester and Tristan Wilhoyd also, also looking in the wings in fifth and sixth. They're now within drafting distance of Caitlin Sang and Aiden Shepard as the 05 of Arndt continues to hold on. Curtis looks to the inside of the 05 at the exit of Blue Ridge and into turn number five. Arndt is going to power back on the outside though and he's going to grab the lead back heading into Elliott's uh, bus stop. Aiden Shepard continues to be smooth and steady through the chase and because of that he might be going for a move on DJ Curtis up the outside. No, Curtis goes to block. And Shepard faked him out down low to the bottom of the racetrack. And he's he's going to get him out of turn 14. That's saying way out into the grass there. Everyone giving it all they got. And we're coming to two laps to go this time. Aiden Shepard. We haven't really seen much of him up front ever since uh, around lap 10 or so. But he's, he appears to be giving it one last shot at the victory here. Arndt's pulled away by about five car lengths, but these long straightaways are gonna allow Shepard and Curtis to potentially close in for another shot. Aiden Shepard originally had to defend DJ Curtis several times at the beginning of this lap, has since pulled away and is trying to run down John Art in the second half of the racetrack where Shepard has been very strong, again, very smooth, through the chase and here comes with a move on the outside of John Art. Art able to hold him off with brute power out, out of turn number 13 but runs it wide and into the rumble strips out of 14. Aiden Shepard nearly forces John Art into the grass and he's going to get the lead on the outside heading into the last couple of corners. As we're coming to the white flag this time John Art looking, looking, nope can't get alongside the 14 heading down towards the start, finish line, white flag in the air, and I can't believe I'm saying this, it's Aiden Shepard in the race lead. It's going to be a Texas showdown between these top two drivers, both of them out of Texas, and here comes Art up the inside for one final time down into Macedonia. Art! Art! Just threw it away for both of the top two there. Shepard had no chance of avoiding that, and the top two are now going to be delegated to outside the top 10. They're going to have to f fight hard to get back in the top 10 on this last lap. And that's devastating for Aiden Shepard in particular, who is having an absolutely amazing race, all to have it become undone on the final lap. John Arndt back here as well. Oh, man. Not much can really be said about that incident. John Arndt just got into Macedonia way too hard, lost control, and took Aiden Shepard with him. And with it, any chances these drivers had at the race victory. DJ Curtis, on the other hand, has been handed the race lead with a silver platter. Just a few corners left to go. Casey Lester just got by Caitlin Sang for second. Tristan Wolhoyt. Might get by Seng for third, but it doesn't look like anyone's going to have a shot at Curtis unless Curtis really messes up or has a mechanical failure at this point. Just a couple of corners to go before Curtis is going to start off his 2017 season with two consecutive victories. It's his fourth career victory and his very first at a road course here at Brasstown Bald Sports Car Course. Casey Lester with a hard-fought second place finish in the 013 car. Caitlin Sang finishes third after leading the most laps of the race, five out of 24. Just goes to show how competitive the race really was, I guess. Tristan Wolhoyt with his second consecutive fourth place finish. That will put him second in points, exiting this round behind only DJ Curtis. 
Grayson Acevedo with a, a great return effort after uh, after having a mechanical failure at Homestead Miami. Jake Baskinger, local Georgian driver, does well in front of his home crowd. Chester Harvey uh, drops to seventh after uh, a poor pit stop in the number 57. Bill Littlejohn gets an eighth place run at a track type that he's probably not that comfortable with, so great job for him. Alexander Rowe dropped to ninth at the end of this thing, and Andreas Allen rounds out the top ten.